Welcome to the module on Conceptual Data Modeling and Entity Relationship Diagrams. My name is Ken Walsh. In this module, we will look at the Conceptual Data Modeling process and we'll look at one particular tool, the Entity Relationship Diagram, for doing that process. I think conceptual data modeling is important for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a good way for the systems analyst to work with the business people to develop a data model. When they do this, they can develop a more complete picture of the data needs than usually the analyst or the business person alone would develop. Secondly, the conceptual data model allows us to develop data models that span departments or business processes, creating a more integrated data model for the organization as a whole. So we're going to look at the entity relationship diagram in detail in this module. Let's take a look. Conceptual data modeling with entity relationship models. This presentation will include conceptual modeling defined, the usefulness of conceptual modeling in business, and we'll go into details on entity relationship models. First, let's design, define conceptual modeling, an abstract model of data needs. What is the scope you would apply one of these models to? Well, you might be just analyzing a business process and want to capture the data needs of that business process. Or you might be looking at the data needs for a project or a system. Or even a more powerful way to use this is looking at the data needs of an organization. Because if you develop a unified data model across an organization, it helps the different applications, different systems in the organization work together. The most common standard for developing a conceptual data model is the Entity Relationship Diagram, or ERD. Why is this useful to business? First of all, it's database technology independent. So the conceptual data model lets us gather the data requirements of our organization before we've selected what database technology we're going to implement that system in. It's also usable by non-techies, well, to some extent. So the language is not really obvious to a non-techie, but when working with a systems analyst, you can work together to develop a data model that really fits the business needs. And, and I mentioned earlier, if you take an organizational approach, then it can model across different business processes. So it doesn't just support one business process, it'll support more than one. And so you'll have a common view of the data even for different processes. So for example, the view of the customer, you'd like the you know, consistent name and information about the customer, uh, but with different details if the customer is in the middle of purchasing or if you're doing some bill collecting. So let's get to the details of the Entity Relationship Model. Introduced by Peter Chen and others, uh, popularized by Peter's paper in 1976, it's database technology independent. Today we often associate it with relational database design. The major components in this language or diagramming tool are the entities, the attributes, the relationships, and the cardinality. So let's look at each of those and a couple examples. Entities are the major things or concepts that information will be stored about. We name them with singular nouns and the symbol we use is the rectangle. Here's some examples. Employee, customer, order, Reservation, right? Tracking reservations would be important if we were in, say, the hotel business or the restaurant business. Course. Tracking the courses that we offer would be important in a university or training environment. So these are some of the entities you want to identify for your organization or for whatever situation you're working in. 
Now, attributes give us detailed pieces of information about that entity, okay? At least one of those attributes is an identifier called the primary key. The symbol of the attribute is the oval. So here is our employee entity. And we can show that the employee entity has three attributes. Employee ID, name, and address. Those are three pieces of information that we want to track around that major concept employee. Right? In the real world, we'll probably have a lot more attributes. This is just a, a small example. You'll notice that employee ID is underlined. That's because that attribute is the primary key that can uniquely identify an instance or one particular employee. Now let's look at relationships. Relationships are the way the entities interact with each other. These are named with a verb and the symbol is the line. Now note, um, there really are a lot of different standards for documenting relationships. So this example uses the line, but you may see other, other ways of writing it. Here's a couple entities we saw before, the customer and the order. But now we're going to say they are related to each other. Why? Because a customer places an order. Okay. And that verb really, we don't, we don't usually have the correct English all the time, but that verb we can think about going in the opposite direction. An order is placed by a customer. So what's the major relationship between these entities? Okay. Um, this is an important one because if we have an order and we don't know who the customer is, we'd be in trouble. So the fact that an order is placed by a customer is pretty important to most businesses that have customers and orders. Now, cardinality is where we specify some more detail about that relationship. Cardinality is the number of instances of one entity that relate to instances of the other. And as I did in the last example, this will read like two sentences, one in each direction. So here is our places relationship, relationship between the customer and the order entity. And now we'll add cardinality. Cardinality can be read, when we read this in a sentence, we think about it on the far side of the sentence we're going to write, read. So I'm going to first read this from left to right and use that zero and M side. A customer places from zero to many orders would be how we'd read that and so the business rule says you know we might have a new customer in our system and they haven't placed any orders yet that's why the lower end of that range is allowed they're allowed to have no orders but we hope the customer will place many orders so over time there'll be many orders or a customer places anywhere from zero to many orders now if we look at reading the sentence in the opposite direction we can say an order is placed by one and only one customer the reason we say that is well the order couldn't have been placed by zero customers or there wouldn't be an order at all uh, also in most businesses there may be some that, that differ from this but usually the order is placed by just a single customer so it's not the same order going to two customers Two customers may both have orders that order some similar things, but they have a unique order. There are unary relationships where an entity is related to itself. So in this example, we have the entity component. And a component is made up of other components. Okay, so a component can be made up of zero to many other components. Okay, so if you had a component that was made up of no other components, that would be kind of like a base part. Didn't have pieces to it, um, you know, important to your business. 
So a component could be made up of many parts. So, so if three parts come together and make a larger component, you have the larger component made up of those others. And finally, we sometimes have attributes on the relationship itself. So most of the attributes we'll deal with have to do with an attribute of the entity, but we'll occasionally have an attribute of the relationship. Here's our um, two entities, student and section. A student enrolls in zero to many sections. A section is enrolled by zero to many students. Not much of a problem there, but for every student enrolled in a section, we're going to be assigning a grade. So that's an attribute of the relationship. Now we can't say that it's an attribute of the student because a student's going to have many grades. So every time a student enrolls in a section, they'll be receiving a grade. So grade is not an attribute of student. And likewise, grade is not an attribute of section because a section will have a bunch of students, each with their own grade. So that's why attribute only works, or grade only works as an attribute of the enrolls in relationship. And one more concept I want to talk to you about is the entity subtype. This is used when two entities are similar, maybe share some attributes, but are not exactly the same. So we need to model both model those differences. So say we have two entities, student and employee. But if we're at a university, sometimes students become employees or employees become students. Maybe a lot of the information is similar. In uh, so in total or partial specialization, uh, total specialization means a person must be either a student or employee. In partial specialization, a person might not be either one. They might just be a person, but not a student or employee. So in this draw, if we were thinking of this in the context of like the whole world, there are certainly people that aren't students or employees. That would be kind of like a partial specialization. But since we'd be writing this just for one organization, probably some type of university or training institution, every person the institution is interested in must be a student or employee. It wouldn't be just a general person. So in the context of a university, we'd say a person is a total specialization in that they must be a student or employee and that's why the double line is shown between the person and the central subtype circle that double line means total specialization now there's another issue whether the subtypes overlap or are disjoint and that would mean can a person be both a student and employee or are they only found in just one category so I would say in a university, it's possible to be in both. There are students that are employees, employees that are students, so you can be in both. That would be considered an overlapping subtype relationship, and the, the O in that middle circle of the subtype symbol indicates overlap. If it were a disjoint relationship, we'd place a D in that circle instead. Well, thank you for listening about entity relationship diagrams and con conceptual data modeling. Some good additional reading can be found at Wikipedia at their entity relationship model site. And the uh, paper I was referring to in the beginning of this presentation is a uh, 1976 paper by Peter Chen and there's a freely distributed uh, copy of that at the URL shown. Thanks.